So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome on stage Danielle Elabeka. Okay! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Who are you? What are you? Uh, wow. Here you go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, no, what am I? Uh, I'd say I'm an explorer, an adventurer. Um, and I was thinking backstage, I'm someone who is uh, on a journey to try and maintain a childlike sense of wonder. So, yeah. Great. So, would you like to explain to us what is parkour to you? And what do you call what you do and where it comes from? Okay, um, so for me, I think uh, the definition of parkour, for those who don't know, what I just did on the stage is a demonstration of this activity uh, that is relatively new to the world in social media and stuff like this. Um, uh, the definition of parkour is about getting from point A to point B uh, as fast as possible. So whatever obstacles are in your way, you have to try uh, and navigate the most efficient and effective way. Um, for me, parkour was something that enabled me to see the, a world of many possibilities, uh, not just one way of doing things, but seeing many ways to explore and express. And so, yeah, I think that's, for me, in a nutshell, what, what parkour is, yeah. And where it comes from. And where it comes from. Okay, so the origin, the origin yes. of parkour. Okay, so for me, my understanding, uh, parkour uh, was founded by a man called George Herbert uh, from France, and he was um, involved in a operation when there was a volcanic eruption. He was put in charge of uh, an evacuation, and uh, it was successful in some respect. But a lot of people lost their life in the in the eruption, and he was he was very puzzled. He couldn't understand uh, how people didn't have the physicality to look after themselves. People didn't have the, uh, the ability to escape uh, the, the devastation of what was happening. Um, so he took it upon himself to uh, explore uh, a method of training that could be impl you know, in, implanted into society um, and ended up traveling to Africa. And when he was in Africa, he, he was uh, studying about like tribal people, people that live in the wilderness. And he was really fascinated by their physicality, and it, it happened to do a lot with the, the, their lifestyle, you know, whether it was hunting and, and, and chasing you know, something down. Uh, so they were all very athletic, and he was really amazed by this. And obviously, within Western society, there isn't much of a need anymore uh, for physical expression, for physical movements, to, to go hunting, to, to, get, you know, to get your food. So what he then did in developing these methods and spending time with the, this African tribe, he uh, introduced it to the, uh, as part of military training, which is now a foundation of military training all across the world. Um, and then from there, it went uh, into the fire service in France. Um, and from my understanding, there was a guy called uh, Raymond Bell, um, who was in the fire service, and his son... David. David, David Bell. Bell. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So David Bell... Um, is the one that introduced a, almost like a childlike aspect of this practice. So the, the movement that was taught into the fire service, he saw his father doing it and, and thought it would be a cool idea to take it onto the streets with his friends and see it as a form of expression and exploring and, and adventure. Um, and that obviously coincided with the, the boom of the internet. So I think that David Bell was the one that would then introduce it to the rest of the world. So, yeah. Interesting. There's, there's a quote by David Bell that says, the best part of falling is getting back again. Do you agree with him knowing that you have a famous quote that says, choose not to fall. If you are afraid of falling, you fall because you are afraid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think we all have it within us. We want to succeed in everything that we do. And the last thing we want to do is to make mistakes and to fall. And I think what David is saying in this quote is that uh, you, learn, you learn more through, the, through being yeah, comfortable with making mistakes. Yes. Um, and so for me personally, I, I've, I've had a video that I, I had made on the internet that was called Choose Not to Fall. Uh, someone had interviewed me in London and I was basically expressing my heart about um, just perception and how perception is... Uh, a very important factor when it comes to practicing and training. 
Um, and so in the documentary that I'm, that I, you know, where they're asking me questions, um, I say that, uh, that falling is a choice and that, yeah, you should ch choose not to fall. But it's been taken out of context because people will think I'm talking physical falling. But for me, again, it's based on your perception of what falling is. Um, so Mental, I could tell physical. Well, yeah, I could give an example. So it's like the difference between me being in a competition and doing flips to impress people, and I fall and I break my leg. Mm -hmm. That's very different than me being standing on the side of a road and seeing a child run into the road, and I instinctively, because of my training, I instinctively react and push the child out of the way, but maybe I get hit by the car and I break my leg. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Yes. Because the falling, trying to prove your worth, trying to, pr tr trying to strive for acceptance is a greater, and, and hurting yourself in that situation is, is a greater uh, devastation, and I would say it, it's worth breaking my leg to save a child's life. Yes. So for me, it's, it's based on interpretation, it's and this clear. is probably the first time that I've actually interpreted that documentary properly. Interesting. I was watching a video of you on YouTube, and there was that scene when you were about to jump, and you, then you held yourself back. That led me to ask you, what will stop you in life, Danielle? Will stop me in life. I think, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question. I think uh, you have to have a purpose when you move. I, I think moving for the sake, again, of, of impressing people. Um, you know, externally, people see, always see the explosiveness of parkour. They'll see me jump across the stage and yeah. they'll make a real emphasis on this, but there's so much more that goes into the activity. Um, and so for me, uh, <laughs> I've lost my, I have a tendency to just wander into a different part. I don't know if you can rephrase that. Yeah, what will stop you in What life? will stop me, okay, yes. sorry. You're unstoppable. <laughs> yeah. um, again, just purpose. I think everything that I look at, whenever I'm looking at a jump, if I, this is a very important thing I, I'm so happy that I get to share with everyone here. People ask me how I deal with fear. Mm. For me, fear is an ally. When I, when I am afraid of doing something, I, I take that as my, through my practice of, of, I've been doing it for 18 years now. Interesting. Um, for me, the moment my heart, I feel fear in my heart, it, I've come to the conclusion that it's my heart's way of asking me to question my motive. And, and, and the way I see it is if my heart is in the right place, then, then I don't, I, there is no fear behind uh, trying something. Yes. So this is how I navigate through physical space. And obviously over my life, the practice of this physical art form has been very scientific for me in the sense of like, what will happen if I do this? Mm -hmm. And I'll do it and, oh, okay, I'll make a mistake. But you learn from your mistake, as David yeah. said, and so for me, it's, it's yeah, I don't know if it, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> No worries. Your navigation, your attitude towards um, play, it's, it's very attractive and unique. Uh, how do you reconnect with learning through play? Learning through play. Well, when, when we look at kids and we see them in this constant state of wonder, this is what I said at the start of the conversation, they're always looking for ways to explore and express. And I think, um, for me, when I wanted to practice parkour, it's because I couldn't make sense of life. I couldn't make sense of why it was important to do various things that I was encouraged to do as a kid, uh, whether it was through school. Um, and so I had to kind of, for me, the only thing that made sense was climbing trees. And so I had to kind of follow my heart in that area. But um, I guess just through the physical practice of, of playing, you learn various attributes, um, not only um, in being efficient from A to B, but how to learn to work together with other people. You develop a community. It's very important to, you come to the realization that it, you're better doing life with other people than you are apart. So there's, there's just, many, for me, there's many attributes, you know, that you would even discover in military training it's the camaraderie, like when you work together as a team. A lot of this stuff takes place in the military, but you don't, none of this stuff is introduced, in, whether it's in schools or in society, as to how to work together to overcome obstacles. So for me, through playing and exploring, I've met like-minded people with the same mindset, and we, I found that I've been able to go further in life as I've developed a, almost like, yeah, just a just a passion for exploring with them, so. What about your best way of learning? Is it through failure, consistency, challenge, adventures? Yeah, for me, I don't know. I, the best way of learning for me is, um, 
That's a difficult question to answer. <laughs> now that I've now that I've said what I've said, it's it's a difficult difficult question to answer. So okay, we we'll carry on. Um, do you get disappointed when you have limitations uh, uh, in doing any kind of sport? Yeah, I think for me, there's there's no real disappointment when it comes to exploring in parkour. For me, parkour is a very a, a very foundational, basic level movement that actually equips you in other sports. So we're not just talking about a new, a new sport and a new activity like skateboarding or, or BMX or something. We're talking about foundational movements that actually enables you to transition into many different activities. So um, that's actually part of my adventure, really, is knowing that I'm not, I don't allow myself to just be defined by parkour. I love all different types of activities. And right now in my life, you know, I, I, you know, I'm exploring, I'm taking what I've learned and I'm, I'm, I'm applying it into like snowboarding or something else. So, yeah. From this point, <laughs> how will you bring this philosophy uh, of movement to the growing numbers of optimistic uh, young people around uh, the globe? Yeah, it's, very, it's an interesting question really because um, like for skateboarding or, or parkour, it's having such an effect in the world of social media. There are so many young people uh, looking in the world today and seeing, the, you know, whether it's in Hollywood or movies, you see people jumping and, and, and yeah. it's always accentuating the big movements. So uh, I can understand that it's created a real hunger for, for children to explore and express. Um, however, me personally, even though I'm involved in the world of social media uh, and have been for the past eight years, um, being introduced to it through parkour, uh, I, I find that face-to-face -face interaction is way more important and effective than uh, how we currently perceive things to be done. So everyone seems to think that we can affect and reach more people via social media, but I would be on the contrary and say that, uh, again, just being intentional to interact with people uh, in the way that we all do community is life and life together, um, we can have a greater impact in the, in the future, in the broader sense, than in the short term. So, so you believe that parkour is uh, a global movement that will change the way people interact with their, their environment. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I think that's definitely, definitely true. I think, um, you know, the, there's one thing that I, I in, in through practicing parkour or even introducing people to parkour is you start to see the world in a different way. You don't just see uh, moving on a sidewalk. You're, you're always looking for ways to create where someone would see a wall that closes them in. Uh, the mentality of parkour enables you to see something that is a joy to overcome. And that isn't just within parkour as a practice. That also can be translated in business. That also can be translated with how you overcome obstacles in work. So many people can go through life and be stressing through, through obstacles that there are in front of them. But what I find within the practice of, of this movement is that it, it, it helps you to readjust your mindset and see joy within the difficulty. So, yeah. Interesting. Did you choose a location in Riyadh to do parkour and film yourself? Um, I haven't actually, I mean, we've seen, when I, I was here three years ago, so this is my third year. Um, I love coming here. It's amazing that I get to work at the MISC school. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I've been to the fort, which has been pretty awesome. But uh, now, now that you say that, I, I would like to actually see what the roof of the Kingdom Tower looks like. I'll be looks with like. you to film it together. <laughs> that would be cool. But just yeah. because for me, it's like when you live in, in, in a city, there's no natural environments. There's no forests and mountains like there is in somewhere like Switzerland. And so for me, this is like the closest thing to a mountain. So I would love to see the world from, from great, that. Great, great. Thank you so much, uh, Danielle. It was a pleasure chatting with you. You're such an amazing and motivational. <laughs> you can join, you can join, you can join. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> You guys don't do moves, you are the moves. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you so much.